Facebook page at Sonora Athletic Boosters. The drawing will be held after 2,000 tickets are sold for a spring sports drawing. The Athletic Boosters is a nonprofit organization that supports the Sonora athletes, coaches, and athletic facilities. The Boosters' support has shown many ways, including volunteering time, raising money, and contributing funds to better enhance the Rams' teams or organization's performance. Yearly and lifetime memberships are available. That's the Sonora Rams Athletic Boosters, who are a proud sponsor of Sonora Sports and Sonora Rams Live. Are you tired of Welcome to game four of the 2022 Tenora Rams Boys Baseball season. Coming up live from Tenora High School, your Tenora Rams taking on the Paulding Panthers here in the GMC opener for both teams. Signs Excavating's first pitch is set for 5 p.m. Signs Excavating offers a variety of excavating and trucking services. Signs Excavating can assist with your general excavating services, demolition, and emergency repair work. From driveways to ditch clean to site prep, Signs Excavating is here to assist you. Signs Excavating team is committed to doing the job right on schedule and with on budget. Based in rural defiance, Signs Excavating serves all of Northwest Ohio, providing reliable and affordable excavating services for your home, business, or industrial property. The Signs Excavating team offers many excavating services, including stone hauling, trenching, demolition, land clearing, and drainage work. Signs Excavating is the official pregame sponsor of the Tenora Rams Live Spring Sports Season. For all your excavating needs, call Josh, 419-769-2290. And for your heavy haul trucking services, you can call Brad, 419-481-3738. Visit them on Facebook or signsexcavating.com. Last season's game from Paulding, we saw a thriller. Both starters, Tenora's Nolan Schaefer and Paulding's Sam Woods, battled through eight innings with the Rams coming away with an extra inning 3-2 win. Back-to-back -back suicide squeezes in the seventh inning gave the Rams a one-run lead before Paulding tied it up. Then Cason Wolfram gave the Rams the win with a single in the top of the eighth inning for a huge GMC win at the time. 2023 Rams are off to a 3-0 start. The Rams started the season on the road last week with wins at Macomb. That was 8-6, and they followed it up with an 8-3 win at Lipsick which currently keeps the Rams undefeated. They open up the home season Tuesday with a 6-0 win over Elmwood as they broke in Grim F Gr uh, Groob Field with a win over the Royals. Eli Plasman got the win going five shutout innings while Luke Harris collected three hits. Quick look back, last season... Rams finished at 21-6, captured their fifth straight GMC title. Tenora finished in a three-way tie with Antwerp and Wayne Trace. Rams made it all the way to the district finals before losing to Ottawa Hills by a score of 4 to nothing. Rams did graduate eight seniors. Graduated were Jaden Bergman, who was second-team All-GMC. Bryce Bailey, Cole Camasso was first-team All-GMC, and he made the All-State team. Nolan Schaefer, first-team All-GMC. Tristan Burks, K.P. DeLarber, Kaysen Wolfram was also first-team GMC. Keegan Miles and Tyler Wimpkin. Returning for the 2023 senior class, Luke Harris, Eli Plasma, and Taryn Ward playing here in their final year in the green and white. Rams bats averaged 11 runs during their 27 win season last year. Team RA was 2.58. Tenora's team batting average was 337. At the plate, Cole Camaso set a new Rams record with 50 RBIs, breaking all-time great Clay Pittman's record of 46 in 2013. Camaso also batted 505 for the season. That was fifth all-time for a Rams batter. Looking at the season for the first time in years, Rams returned minimal experience on the mound. Rams need to replace Wolfram, Camaso, Schaefer, Burks. Rams will look to establish a new rotation here in 2023. Corbin Castillo, Eli Plasman, Taryn Ward, Alex Shoblin, and Hunter Bosselman will look to ease some innings for Coach Renolette. Infield, Rams have Taryn Ward at third, Caden Radzik at short, and Eli Plasman returns at second this season. Outfield returns Luke Harris and Grady Gusweiler. 
Pauling comes in after a 13 and 13 2022 season. They were four and three in the GMC. They did graduate all GMC pitcher and catcher Sam Woods. Woods pitched 41 in the third innings last year and struck out 48. Had an ERA of 2.20. Panthers are two and four as they start GMC play tonight here at Groove Field. Coach Barton loaded up his schedule early with some major powerhouses: Ottawa, Glendorf, Lincoln View, Archibald, and Defiance. Some of Paulding's first six contest. Paulding's coached by head coach Ben Barton since his third season, assisted by Matt Orlando, who was the girls' basketball coach, and Thor Etter. Pauling is Division Three. Colors are maroon, white, and the splash of black. They're from the GMC. Superintendent is Kenneth M. Schultz. Principal is Chris Etzler. Athletic director is Mr. Tyler Aaron, who does a fantastic job over there. You don't want nobody nicer than Tyler as far as an AD. Athletic trainer is Cassie Beardsley. Rams are coached by head coach Brett Renolette, 24 season here at Sonora for BR. He is 390 and 144, 73% winning percentage at Sonora. He's 428 and 170 overall. Picked up career win 400 on May 1st, 2021 versus Patrick Henry. Assisted by Chuck Carey, Reed Anders, and Eric Tipton. Rams have four final four appearances, 2011, 12, 13, and 14. One state title in 2024. That was courtesy of Clay Pittman driving home E.J. Kissel with the winning run in that thriller versus Newark Catholic. Rams have 10 GMC titles under BR 2009, 10, 11, 12, 13, 17, 18, 19, 21, and 22. Overall in the GMC, Coach Arnolette is 119 and 40. Superintendent at North Eastern Local Schools is Nicole Wells. Principal at Sonora High School is Alex Nafziger. Athletic Director, who's retiring in June, Mr. Craig Rudder, so we wish Coach Rudder the best. Trainer is Emily Volmar. Rams colors are Hunter Green and White. Rams are Division Three. so wherever you are, however you may be listening or watching, thanks for tuning in to tonight's contest coming up live from Tenora High School. See Tenora Rams taking on the Paulding Panthers in the GMC season opener. Broadcast studio tonight brought to you by Cut and Polished Hair and Nail Salon located at 413 Hopkins Street in Defiance. In-game scoreboard brought to you by Drop Zone Pizzeria and Striker and Ayersville. Pre-game brought to you by Signs Excavating. Video sponsorship as always Batten Stevens in Jewel, Ohio. Stats brought to you by BSN Sports and Mr. Jim Gares. Post-game brought to you by Bidlack Insurance and Financial Investments. Your player of the game in a Rams victory. Higby Embroidery. So Connie, fantastic Fantastic job as always by Connie Higby. Uniforms tonight: Paulding in the dark gray with maroon sleeves, maroon lettering with white trim. Rams in the all grays with the hunter green letters and white trim. Wind blowing out to center field about 10-12 miles an hour. David Frank weather forecast here at Tenora High School: a little overcast. Game time temperature is 50 degrees. Feels a little chillier than 50. Anybody that's ever been at Tenora, it can be 92 degrees. You come out to Tenora High School, and it's probably 70. It never fails. You wear shorts from home. You come to Tenora, you probably say, I should have brought a blanket and a jacket. Looking at the visitors, the Paulding Panthers, we said they come in at 2 and 4. Leading off, Kane Jones playing in center field, batting second. Casey Agler, he will be at first base. Ethan Foltz batting third at shortstop. Batting fourth behind the plate, Isaac Reed. Batting fifth on the mound, Jacob Martinez. Martinez also hitting. Batting sixth at left field is Nick Manns. Batting seventh at the hot corner of third is Grayson Harder. Batting fourth, or batting eighth at second base is Peyton Adams. And batting ninth is Larkin Yates. Gates will be in right field. And the National Anthem will have the Rams line up after the National Anthem.
National Anthem here at Groove Field at Sonora High School. Looking at the Rams, starting lineup, leading off in left field, Aiden Mosier. Batting second at shortstop, Caden Radzik. Batting third, playing at second base, Alex Shoblin. Batting fourth, clean up spot at the hot corner third is Karen Ward. Batting fifth in right field is Luke Harris. Harris with three singles on Tuesday versus Elmwood. Batting sixth. Behind the plate, Dalton Wolfram. Batting seventh at first base, Hunter Bosselman. Batting eighth will be your DH, B.J. Morlock. Morlock is hitting for Ram starter Corbin Castile. Batting ninth and in center field is Grady Gusweiler. So thanks for joining us here on Snore Rams Live. Softball going on next door. Dr. A.J. and Kaylee. Should be kicking off that one over there, as long as they don't have any technical issues. They didn't call, so they must be all set. It's always, it's always good when that happens. But here are the Rams coming in at 3-0, and and the Panthers coming in at 2-4. and As we said, I talked to Coach Barton quite a bit before the game. He liked to say he liked to load up his non-conference schedule, and that he did. Opened up with Ottaville. Won that one four to two. Game two was versus Lincoln View. They lost that one five to one. Their third game was Archibald. They lost that one eleven to ten. Coach Barton said they were up ten to five with two outs in the seventh. And they had the third out. They committed an error and they wind up losing eleven to ten. Played at Patrick Henry. Actually had out of a Glandor schedule. That was rained out. And on Monday. They were defeated by Defiance by a score of five to nothing. I believe that was a no hitter by Jimenez. That was his third one in his career. Looking okay, at the Rams defense, Castillo on the mound, Wolfram behind the plate, Bossa one at first, Shoblin at second, Ward at third, Razik at short, outfield, Mosier in left, Gusweiler in center, and in right field is Luke Harris. Morlock will be DHing for Corbin Castillo. For those of you just joining us, Panthers line up. Jones will be leading off. Agler batting second. Fultz batting third. Reed batting fourth. Jacob Martinez will be on the mound. He's batting fifth. Mann's batting sixth. Grayson Harder is batting seventh. Peyton Adams eighth. And Larkin Yates will be batting in the number nine spot for Coach Ben Barton and his Paulding Panthers. Third season for Coach Barton over at Paulding. One of the nicer fellows around. Be coaching third base. And at first base is Matty A. Matt Orlano is the Paulding girls coach, actually. Why do you know so much about Paulding people, I always ask? Well, I played softball over there for about 15 years, and you get to know a lot of people. Playing uh, no, off for the Panthers is Kane Jones. Jones, fantastic season on the hardwood. Castillo winds and fires. Jones liner at second base, right at right at Alex Shoblin for out number one. Jones hit it right on the screws. Unfortunately, hit it right at Shoblin. It's going to bring up Casey Agler. Agler batting from the right side. First pitch by Castile, pop up, Shoblin underneath it, just a little bit on the outfield grass and right field, puts it away. Shoblin has retired the first two <laughs> Panthers batters, which is odd <laughs> for a second baseman. Stopping in will be Ethan Fultz. It's like we have the Major League pitch clock here. We're just speeding right along. Castile from the windup. Strike called. Castillo last year was 1 0, pitched seven in the third innings, allowed one run, one earned run, two hits. Walked five, struck out ten, pitched outside, count evens at 1 and 1. Castillo's ERA was .96. Corbin pitched in the Acme League during the Acme season, had a nice season as well. 1 1 from Castillo, breaking ball just a bit high to Ethan Foltz. Isaac Reeb on deck for the Panthers. 2-1 pitch from Castile to Foltz. Swung on. Little blooper. I guess it's not a blooper. It's hit deeper than I thought to right field. Luke Harris a couple steps back. Puts it away. For the Panthers in the top part of the inning. 
No runs, no hits, no ram errors, no Panthers left on base after a half inning here at Sonora High School. It is the Pauly Panthers nothing, and the Sonora Rams will be coming to bat. Who couldn't use an extra 3000 or 2000 mm, Okay. How about 1000 or even 500 Those are the top four prizes of the most recent Tenora Athletic Boosters fundraiser. Tickets are $10 each or 6 for 50 Get a ticket at any Tenora home game. Just visit a booster member or go to our Facebook page at Tenora Athletic Boosters. The drawing will be held after 2,000 tickets are sold for a spring sports drawing. The Athletic Boosters is a nonprofit organization that supports the Tenora athletes, coaches, and athletic facilities. The Boosters' support is shown many ways, including volunteering time, raising money, and contributing funds to better enhance the Rams' teams or organization's performance. Yearly and lifetime memberships are available. That's the Tenora Rams Athletic Boosters, who are a proud sponsor of Tenora Sports and Tenora Rams Live. Make sure you get that booster ticket. You got two booster tickets you can get. Actually, you can get a ticket for the April 15th booster event, which is going to be a night of fun at Ridgeville Legion. Tickets are $50 each. That's meal ticket and drinks and you name it. The other ticket is for the spring fundraiser. That is tickets for $10 each or six tickets for $50. Grand prize is $3,000. Second prize is $2,000. Third prize is $1,000. Fourth prize is $500. So in theory, if you bought enough tickets, you could win $6,500. Get those at the Oklahoma Tavern or you can contact a Tenora Rams Athletic Booster member. Just go to Facebook. Look for Tenora Athletic Boosters. Shoot us a personal message and we'll get you the tickets for that. That is next Saturday night, April 15th. For those that are interested, and hopefully everybody out there is. You don't have to go to the reverse raffle. You can still get a booster ticket. Aiden Mosier steps in for the Rams. Jacob Martinez will be on the mound for the Paulding Panthers. Martinez, senior righty. Going to bat from the left side. Where's number six on his gray uniform again? Last year, BSN Sports' Jim Gears, some more alum, of course, designed some fantastic uniforms for the boys' and girls' softball team. First pitch to Mosier is outside. Corner, straight, one call. So if you need any equipment, especially uniforms, get a hold of BSN Sports and Mr. Jim Gears. Martinez winds it up. Pitch, tap, third base side by the third baseman. Short stop in the hole. Throws over just in time. Nice play by shortstop Ethan Fultz to retire Aiden Mosier for out number one. I'm going to bring up Caden Radzik for the Rams. Rams, Radzik, shortstop. Actually had a heck of a season as the Rams defensive backfield on the uh, gridiron. Martinez this pitch. Outside corner, strike called. Just underway here at Sonora High School. No score, bottom of inning number one. Mr. Bryce Bailey makes an appearance. Breaking ball to Radzik, strike two called. Now you ready, buddy. Now you ready. No balls, two strikes, one out, base is empty. Martinez winds it up. 1-0-2 oh, to Radzik, swung on and missed strike three. Radzik went fishing on that one. Now batting, number 21, Alex Shoblin. Oh, number two is going to bring up Alex Shoblin, Rams second baseman. Shoblin, bats from the right side of the plate. Had a heck of a freshman here last year, so he was injured. First pitch to Shoblin hits in front of the plate. Ball one. Third baseman in against Shoblin. 1 0 pitch called a strike. Out evens at one ball and one strike. Two outs. Base is empty. No score here in the bottom part of inning number one here at Tenor High School on your drop zone pizzeria scoreboard. 1 1 pitch swung on and missed. Fouled into the glove. Strike two. <laughs> Track going on, baseball, softball. A triple header here at Tenora High School. Parking lot is full. 1-2 pitch from Martinez to Shoblin. 
little bit outside and low. Count evens at two balls and two strikes. Reed Andrews coaching at first, and as always, BR coaching at third. Pitch is up and in, ball three. Three balls, two strikes, count is full. Genius winds it up. Payoff pitch inside, ball four. Shoblin draws a two-out walk. Going to bring up Rams third baseman, Taryn Ward. Rams off tomorrow. They will travel to Bedford, Michigan on Saturday for a 2 o'clock game. Rams softball, I believe, plays a doubleheader at Wasion Saturday. Martinez from the stretch. First pitch to Ward. Catches the corner for a strike. And for those of you that missed his voice, you'll be able to hear Mr. Ned down there today. <laughs> A one pitch coming to Ward from Martinez. That's low. One ball, one strike, two outs. Rams have a runner at first. Alex Shoblin, no score as they bat here in the bottom of the first inning. Told Ned we missed you last uh, Tuesday, or this Tuesday. This past Tuesday. Martinez looks at Shoblin at first, comes to the plate to Ward. That one catches the outside corner, strike two. Martinez shakes off Isaac Reeb, gets to sign he wants. One, two, pitch to Ward. Ward hits it by the third baseman into left field for a solid base hit. Kind of reminds me of the scene from Bull Durham where <laughs> Lelouch shakes off Crash Davis and the next pitch he hits over the fence. Well, that didn't get hit over the fence, but Ward hit it by the third baseman for a base hit. we bring up Luke Harris. Luke with three base knocks uh, Tuesday versus Elmwood. Has runners at first and second with two out. <laughs> Jacob Martinez looks back at Shoblin. The second comes to the plate. First pitch to Harris. A little bit low, ball one. I still have my scratchy voice I had Tuesday. I just can't get rid of it. Martinez looks back at the runner. 1-0 pitch. Now he wheels. Throws it in the center field. Oh, Shoblin got a bad break. He dove back into the base. Time he got up. I still think he could have made it. But with two outs, I guess you don't want to risk it. But Martinez wheeled and fired, fired back. The second baseman, Peyton Adams, was covering. And it sailed over Adams' head. Unfortunately, Shoblin couldn't bounce back up in time. 1-0 pitch to Harris from Martinez. Strike called. One ball, one strike, two outs. Rams have runners on first and second. No score here at Krug Field in the bottom of inning number one. Crowd all bundled up here. Next week we won't be bundled up. Pitchers in the 70s and possibly 80. 1-1 one, one pitch to Harris is inside. Two balls and one strike. You know how the weather forecast goes, so we'll see. We'll believe it when it gets here. Harrison digs in the box. 2-1 from Martinez. Swung on. Fouled back over our head. Count goes to two balls, two strikes, two outs. No score. Rams with 2-1. Dalton Wolfram on deck. For Tenora. Martinez. Stretch. Pitch to Harris. Tap. Third base side foul. Third baseman Grayson Harder scoops it up. About a half a foot outside the bag at third. One thing about the turf, you're not going to get one of those bad hops like we had on the infield where the ball could be fouled and hit one of those clumps out there and all of a sudden it's a fair ball. Runners back to their bases. 2-2 two -two pitch from Martinez to Harris. Swung on, drilled deep, center field, in right in this spot was Kane Jones, unfortunately. Harris nailed it right at Kane Jones for out number three. Rams threatened. They do not score. No runs for the Rams. They get one hit, no holding errors. 
And two left on base. After one here at Groove Field at Tenora High School. Drop zone pizzeria scoreboard. Tenora and Paulding are scoreless. Van and Stevens Body Shop is your number one voted auto collision repair facility in Northwest Ohio. We have recently built a brand new state-of-the-art 20,000 square foot body shop along with a 2,500 square foot addition to our paint shop. This includes a brand new eco-friendly paint booth that is top of the line. At Van and Stevens we use the latest and newest technology the industry has to offer. We are your experts on all makes and models of vehicles and are the only Chrysler, Ford, and GM certified collision repair facility in Northwest Ohio. Give us a call today at 419-497-3111 to schedule your free estimate or stop by and visit us in downtown Jewel, Ohio. Matt and Stevens Body Shop would like to wish all teams good luck this season. Northwest Ohio Sports is the place for sports rankings, news, scores, podcasts, and more for area athletics. Check them out at Northwest Ohio Sports on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Back to the action on Tenora Rams Sports Live. Starting inning number two here at Groove Field at Tenora High School. Isaac Reeb, Jacob Martinez, and Nick Manns will bat against Rams senior righty Corbin Castile. Castile, number 22 on his sharp-looking Rams gray jersey. Tenora across the front, number in the left-hand corner. Hunter Green with the white border in the Ram cap. It's kind of a staple here at Tenora High School. Okay. Get him going. Isaac Reeb steps in, bats from the right side of the plate. Isaac Reeb. Reeb a senior. Nothing to worry about. Where's 22? Can't have that. All right, there it was. I just stepped. 23, I guess. Hat says 22. Jersey says 23. First pitch to Reeb is called a strike. Steals pitch, breaking ball, little blooper. Harris comes on. Nice running catch, Luke Harris. Back to back, nice plays out there by Luke in right field. Jacob Martinez. Harris ended the inning with a nice catch. Started this one with a nice catch. Pitcher batting for himself, Jacob Martinez. Martinez also a senior. A lot of seniors on the Panthers. First pitch over the head of Castillo. Radzik scoops it up. Throw over to first base. Bosselman puts it away for out number two. Now batting number Nick Manns. I'm going to dig in for the Panthers. Yeah. Go, Nick. Nick with a little bit of orange on his cleats. Keep swinging. Thank you. You did a good job Steals first pitch just a bit outside. Ball one. No score here is the Panthers bat with two outs in the top of inning number two. Castillo winds it up, comes to the plate. A little bit low. Two balls and no strikes. To left fielder Nick Manns. Is he really? Manns and the Panthers had a heck of a basketball season from the GMC. Try to play something? Swung on and missed. Strike one. And our head coach Brian Jones resigned last week, so there's a boys basketball opening over at Paulding. Guess you want to go out and go out with a GMC title. Pitch is fouled off for the first base dugout. Count evens at two balls, two strikes, nobody on for the Panthers. And the Rams did, or the Panthers did clinch the GMC title here on the Tenora Hardwood. And then two weeks later, the Rams got him back in the tournament. 2 2 pitch swung on, fouled first base side out of play. Rams lost by 29, I believe, at home. And then two weeks later, come back, had an overtime thrilling victory at Springfield High School in the sectional opener. 49-46. 2 2 pitch from Castillo. Breaking ball stays inside. Count goes full. Three balls, two strikes. Three balls, two strikes, two outs. You don't see a lot of breaking balls from Corbin. Payoff pitch swung on and missed. Down goes Mans for out number three for Castile. That's his first strikeout. After an inning and a half here at Snore High School. Balding nothing, and the Tenora Rams nothing. 
Wooden Indian Pawn and Gun of Defiance has been serving Northwest Ohio for over 30 years. Need cash? Collateral pawn loans are available. Stop in and see Shar and the staff at 5727 State Route 66 North in Defiance, Ohio. Wooden Indian Pawn and Gun carries a full line of new and pre-owned items that include firearms, ammo, optics, game systems, knives, jewelry, and Amish Poly furniture. Wooden Indian Pawn and Gun has in-house jewelry as well as a gunsmith on site. Hours of operation are Monday 10 to 7, Tuesday through Friday 10 to 5, and Saturday 9 to 3. Got questions? Give them a call, 419-784-9880, or visit them online at woodenindianpawn.com, or visit their Facebook page. Wooden Indian Pawn and Gun, your locally owned pawn specialists. Say, go Rams. Back to the action on Tenora Rams Sports Live. Welcome back to Tenora High School here at Groove Field. We are scoreless as we hit the bottom of inning number two. Six, seven, and eight will be your batters. Dalton Wolfram, Hunter Bosselman, and B.J. Morlock to face Paulding senior righty Jacob Martinez. Rams had two runners on in the first inning. Could not break through. Dalton Wolfram, one of the many wrestlers for Coach Seward that went to state this past season. I think Dalton set a couple records this past season for the Tenor Wrestling Program, which is established as one of the better wrestling programs in Northwest Ohio under the toolage of Coach Seward. First pitch to Dalton inside. Like when you think of Tenor Wrestling, you think of Coach Seward, you're like, man, those guys are tough. 1-0 pitch from Martinez to Dalton Wolfram inside. Two balls and no strikes. Out of Hello, Grayson. From the Athletic Boosters have an Athlete of the Week award they give out. I think Dalton won it like four or five times this year. And they would evaluate us. Yeah. It's a right at shortstop. Ethan Foltz. Foltz throws over to first base. Casey Agler puts it away for out number one. That's going to bring up Hunter Bosselman. Bosselman, sophomore. Pitched two innings of effective relief versus Elwood. And, uh, Eli Plasman with the first five. Bosselman came on the final two. And then right home with them. And then we talked fishing. First pitch to Hunter stays high. Well, what didn't go well? What did they want? Two long. Both of them. Yeah. What the varsity pitch was on. It was really good. We learned. Pitch to Bosselman. Catches the outside corner. Count evens. One ball, one strike, one out. Nobody on. No score here in the bottom of inning number two. Yeah. Sophomore Bosselman. Bass from the right side. Martinez gets the sign from Reeb. Winds it up. Breaking ball. Strike two. Nice pitch by Jacob Martinez. No. Martinez winds it up. One, two, pitch. It's a foul first base side. I mean, Chase, initially was Casey Agler. He kind of gave up as it wind up out of play. How stays that? One and two to Hunter Bosselman. B.J. Morlock on deck for the Rams. B.J. D.H. in tonight for Rams pitcher Hunter Castile. Or Hunter. Corbin Castile. Hunter Bosselman digs in. Martinez, one, two, pitch coming. Breaking ball went over the head of Bosselman to the backstop it went. Good day. I step out and take a couple breaths after that one. Hunter digs right back in. 2-2 two -two pitch coming. Breaking ball tapped back to the mound. Martinez one hands it. Fires over to Agler for out. Number two. B.J. Morlock steps in. will be your D.H. Morlock, junior, bats from the right side of the plate. Took over the familiar number five, who Nolan Schaefer, I think, wore that for about a decade here at Snore High School, it seemed. When you're a freshman starter in most varsity sports, you seem like you, you're here forever, which Nolan's one of those faces that you saw all the time. 1-0 pitch to... Morlock is swung on and missed, tapped into the glove. Count evens at one and one. No score, two outs, nobody on here in the bottom of inning number two. Martinez winds it up. Pitch to Morlock. Ball two. Ball two. 
Eddie Gusweiler on deck for the Rams. Yes. <laughs> Pitch to BJ is high. Yes, Lisa. It did seem like the Nolan was here forever. <laughs> one of the one of the top ten athletes in uh, Sonora High School athletics, without a doubt. Nolan was. Morlock slaps it hard. Unfortunately, right at the shortstop, Fultz throws it over. Bump tires Morlock. Six to three for out number three. Rams, no runs, no hits, no balding, at the, balding errors, and they do not leave anybody on base. After two here at Groove Field at Tenor High School, we are scoreless. Looking for home or auto insurance? What about building for retirement? Or looking to start a small investment portfolio for your family? Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services of Defiance has you covered. Tim Bidlack of Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services has over 10 years of investment experience. Tim can assist in estate planning, IRAs, 401k investments, among other financial planning areas. Need home or auto insurance? Welcome Austin Bidlack. He can assist you on those. At Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services, they will work one-on-one with you to make sure your home, auto, and business are protected. Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services are located at 912 East 2nd Street in Defiance. Call Tim or Austin at 419-438-0023 today for a free quote. You can visit them online or on their Facebook page as well. Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services wish the best to all the Tenor Rams athletes this season. Northwest Ohio Sports is the place for sports rankings, news, scores, podcasts, and more for area athletics. Check them out at Northwest Ohio Sports on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Back here at Groove Field at Sonora High School, we are scoreless as the Paulding Panthers will bat in the top of inning number three. Going to send seven, eight, nine. Grayson Harder, Peyton Adams, and Larkin Yates will face Rams senior righty Corbin Castile. We appreciate everybody for watching and listening. Now batting number forty. Yeah, quite a few compliments. And we appreciate him, I assure you. <laughs> so my voice was a little more crisp tonight. Castillo winds it up as we start inning number three. All sweet bitch stays inside to Grayson Harder. That one hits the outside corner. Count evens up at one ball and one strike. Good Friday tomorrow. Nobody's doing anything. As far as athletics, swung on, hit deep. Mosier turns, turns again, caught it. Aiden Mosier initially turned the wrong way, turned back the other way, then spun around again and made a nice catch. For round number one off the bat of Grayson Harder. Pate Adams steps in from the right side of the plate. Castillo winds it up. Pitch way outside. Ball one. There you go. One oh. Pitch two. Peyton Adams. Hot little soft liner bounces in front of Razik, scoops it up, fires over just in time to get to Speedy Adams for out number two. Up to the plate, number nine, Larkin Yates. It's going to bring up number nine hitter, Larkin Yates. Corbin Castile, 20 pitches through the first two and two thirds innings, 13 strikes. Eight steps in, bats from the left side, playing in right field for Coach Barton. First pitch inside, ball one. No score here in the top of the third inning. Moving right along, softballs just to the first inning, and they're scoreless over there. 1-0 pitch, hits the outside corner. We're evened up at 1-1. One one. Two outs, nobody on, no score here in the top of inning number three. 50 degrees at game time. Swung on, hit. To left field, right in front of Aiden Mosier. Mosier hustled all the way in. Mosier went in. Radzik came running out, hit right in the middle of him for a single, two out single for Larkin Yates. So Yates is on the first with two outs, top of the lineup. Kane Jones steps in, popped out in shallow right. Two out, Shoblin has first plate appearance. 
Steele throws over to first base. Morlock slaps the tag on Yates back safely. No, no, no. Steele from the stretch. There goes the runner. Pitch is fouled back for a strike. We'll have our game on YouTube tomorrow. Once we upload it tonight, it takes us like six to eight hours to upload the high definition video to YouTube. Throw over. I'll start it when I get home, usually about 9, 9 I'll link it all together and I'll up start the upload about 10, 10 30, and it's it's usually ready about four or five in the morning, which is amazing. It takes that long. Castillo throws over. They got the runner picked off. Go get it. Morlock runs at the runner. Still running. Still running. Now run. I think we're going to have. Oh, they called him out. I was. I thought they were going to rule. There was going to be fielder interference there, which Coach Barton is going to go out. I think and ask that. I think that was fielder interference. But regardless, they catch Yates off first base for out number three in the inning for Paulding. No runs, one hit, no errors, and they do not leave anybody. So after two and a half here at Tenora High School, we are scoreless. Maumee Valley Title Agency of Defiance has been providing seamless and transparent real estate closings in Northwest Ohio for 27 years. From contract to closing, their experienced team of attorneys and title agents work with lenders, businesses, and individuals to meet their real estate needs. Call the office at 419-782-3334 Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. or visit them online at maumeetitle.com. Maumee Valley Title Agency of Defiance wishes all the Tenora Rams athletes the best this season. Heading to the third inning, we are scoreless to cap that last out. Castillo had the runner Yates picked off. Bosselman ran at him, ran at him, ran at him. Threw the ball just a split second too late. Radzik slapped a tag on him, but we, we discussed up here for a split second. Didn't know if Caden was actually in the base path. It, it, like I said, we're up here. We're looking through a double pane windows with spots and the chain link fence so and a million flies still that john's still trying to get rid of but the rams might have caught a break there number 25 Brady gusweiler top of the lineup nine then one and two gusweiler mosher and radzik to face jacob martinez Thank you. Rams, two runners on in the first, did not get a runner on in the second. First pitch to Grady, outside corner, called a strike. If you can hit that outside corner tonight, you're going to get a lot of calls. All right, now you go, kid. Now you go. Jacob Martinez winds it up. His 0-1 pitch to Grady. Swung on and missed. Nice breaking ball by Martinez. Grady's down on the count. No balls and two strikes. Martinez, 35 pitches, 22 strikes. 0-2 pitch to Grady. That one's low. Ball one. So one nice thing about game change, it gives you any and every stat you want. As long as the teams do it. Most teams do it. Some don't. 1-2 pitch to Grady. Breaking ball fouled at the plate. Nice breaking ball again by Martinez. Martinez and Castillo both have the breaking ball working great tonight. <laughs> One, two, pitch to Grady. Hit second base side. Second baseman Peyton Adams scoops it up. Fires over to first base in time to retire Grady Gusweiler for the first out. Top of the lineup, Aiden Mosier will step in for Tenora. Mosier grounded to the shortstop. Ethan Fultz, his first plate appearance. We are scoreless here in the bottom of inning number three. GMC opener for both teams. Martinez, first pitch. High and away, ball one. one 0 -oh pitch. Good eye, six. Good eye. Good eye, good eye. 
You're right. Yeah. Good pee for me. Yeah. Yeah. One, one, Good pee for me. Pee for you? Yeah. yeah. I don't have to, though. Oh, no, darn. 2 0 pitch is strike on the outside corner to Rams leadoff hitter, right or left fielder, Aiden Mosier. Oh. 2-1 pitch. <laughs> Stays a little bit low. 3-1. We are scoreless here with one out in the third inning. Rams, the only team to threaten. They did that in the first inning. Had 2-1. 3-1 pitch to Mosier. That's a ball. Ball four. So Aiden Mosier draws a one-out walk. We'll trot down to first base. Going to ring up Caden Radzik. Radzik struck out in the first inning. The Pittsburgh Sioux, welcome back. Look forward to seeing you this year and, of course, during the fall. And summer, of course, we'll have Acme. Martinez from the stretch. First pitch to Radzik. Inside corner strike called. Whenever Pittsburgh sues in town for an event, she always stops up to say hi. Time out. Coach Renolette asks for a time. He's going to talk to his junior shortstop, Caden Rasek. Runner at first, Aiden Mosier. He walked with one out here in the third inning. Alex Shoblin on deck for the Rams. Sometimes BR likes to put a little hit and run on third baseman in a foot on what would be the grass. Martinez from the set. His 0-1 to Radzik outside. Count evens at one ball and one strike. Get the batter. Pitch to Radzik. Must be a little bit low. Two balls and one strike. Isaac Reeb asks for time. He's going to go out and have a brief conversation with his senior writer, Jacob Martinez. No score is the Rams bat here in the bottom of the third inning. Runner at first, one out. <laughs> Jacob Martinez, 2-1 pitch to Caden Radzik. A soft little liner, left field. That's going to fall in front of the left fielder, Nick Manns. Little shot off the handle. Radzik with a little bloop single. is going to put Aiden Mosier at second and Caden at first. <laughs> And to the plate will be Alex Shoblin. Shoblin with a walk his first time at the dish. Runners lead from first and second. One out. Shoblin asks for time. He steps out. Third baseman for the Panthers, Grayson Harder, takes a couple steps back. He's even with the bag at third. Outfield straight away for Shoblin. Martinez from the stretch looks back at the runner. Second comes to the plate. A little bit low. Ball one. Rams threatening one out here in the bottom of the third. No score. Pitch to the plate. Swung on and missed. Gets behind the umpire. Reeb had to fight through the umpire to get the ball. Rams runners stay put. It's one of those if it trickles just a little bit farther behind the umpire. I think BR is telling Mosier to get here. Because the umpire has to stay put. And the catcher, Reeb, has to fight his way through the umpire to get the ball. 1-1 one, one pitch to Shoblin. Little liner into right field. That's going to be a base hit. Mosier hits third. He's going to hang on there. That's going to load the bases. BR put up the stop sign to Mosier. Mosier at third. Radzik at second. And on at first with the opposite field shot into right field is Alex Shoblin. That's going to bring up Karen Ward. Ward singled his first opportunity at the plate. No score. Here is the Rams bat in the third inning, but they are threatening with the bases loaded and one out. 
Darren Ward, one of the more consistent hitters the last month of the season last year. First pitch to Darren, breaking ball, strike one. Mosier at third, Radzik at second, Shablin at first, Ward at the plate. Jacob Martinez from the stretch looks at the runner at third. His 0-1 pitch to Ward swung on and missed. Strike two. No score next north to softball game. Here the same no score. O2 pitch to Ward, breaking ball, stays high. Darren thought about it, then he's like, uh, did I just take strike three? The umpire called it the ball. One ball, two strikes, one out. Bases full of Rams. Jacob Martinez from the set. His one, two to Taryn Ward. Get him, boy! Line shot into right center field. And that's going to score two. Shoblin hits the bag at third. He's held up there. Ward. Knocks in Mosier and Radzik. The Rams lead 2 nothing here in the bottom of the third. Ward with a two RBI double in the gap. Shoblin stops at third. It's going to bring up Luke Harris. Harris with runners at second and third and one out. Rams going opposite field against Jacob Martinez this inning. One out, guys. Get the batter. Martina still from the stretch. Comes to the plate. Harris taps it at the plate. Foul. And as we said, congratulations to Luke. Competed in the Northwest District All-Star Game Saturday. Won the three-point contest as well as the slam dunk contest. And if you haven't seen Luke's dunk that basically won the contest for him, you can look that up. It's a heck of a dunk. Just scrammed after this pitch. Oh, one pitch to Harris for Martinez. Suicide squeeze. Harris gets the ball down. Scoring is Shoblin. Harris does his job. Here comes another runner. They're trying to get two. Oh. They said he missed the tag. The Rams get two on the suicide squeeze, which I think Taryn Ward was safe. That was a heck of a slide by Ward. Harris with the sacrifice, gets one RBI. That scores Shoblin. Ward hit the bag at third. Came down hustling all the way. Turned the bag. BR sent him. Ward with a slide, which you on this turf. It's just like a, a wet banana. If you had that one of those as a kid, you hit it and you can just go forever. And Ward slid, turned his body sideways, touched the plate, I think, with his hand. And Reeb could not get the tag on him. So Harris is out at first for out number two. Rams have scored four this inning. To the plate is Dalton Wolfram. Well, pitch is a ball. Ball one. Next pitch is fouled right back at you. Strike one. One ball, one strike, two outs here. Rams, just like that, have a 4 nothing lead. As you saw one of our little flies in front of the camera there. Martinez, his 1-1 one, one pitch hits in front of the plate. Two balls and one strike. Four hits in the inning for the Rams on four runs so far. Base is empty. 2-1 pitch to Dalton Wolfram is inside. Ball three. Three and one. Two outs. Base is now empty. Rams lead 4-0 in here in the bottom of inning number three. 3-1 three from Martinez. Wolfram smashes it right on the ground. It's short. Ethan Foltz deep in the hole. Tries to scoop it up, hits off his heel. We're going to give Dalton a base hit on that because I think even if Fultz fields it, he still has to spin and throw to first base. And Wolfram was getting it down the line. That's a fifth hit in the inning for the Rams. Going to bring up Hunter Bosselman. Bosselman bounced right back to the pitcher, his first plate appearance. Bosselman steps in from the right side of the plate. Martinez, first pitch, up and in, ball one. 
going to have a timeout. Isaac Reeb's going to go out and talk to Jacob Martinez. Runner at first, two outs. Rams lead 4 nothing as they bat here in the bottom of inning number four. Or three. Bottom of inning number three. <laughs> no. <laughs> Martinez from the stretch. 1-1 one, one pitch to Bosselman. That's called strike on the outside corner. One ball and one strike. Which I noticed this at the softball field, which I'll get to this in a second. One ball, one strike pitch. Swung on and miss. Strike two. They did touch up the scoreboard this offseason. They repainted the Ram and the baseballs out there because those things were faded as heck. The last couple of years. So whoever did that did an A-plus job. One-two pitch to Bosselman. Bounces to the plate. Taking off for a second is Dalton Wolfram. Wolfram's going to check in on the wild pitch at second base. Count to Hunter Bosselman. Two balls and two strikes. Two Rams are out here in the third inning. Swung on. Slapped into the Rams dugout. Count stays at two and two. Jacob. Two Martinez looks back at Wolfram a second, comes to the plate. Off speed pitch, swung on and miss. Strike three, down goes Bosselman. In the inning for the Rams, they do quite a bit of damage. They get four runs, five hits. One, well, actually, there's no errors. And one Ram was left on base. After three here at Tenora High School, it is Tenora four. And the Paulding Panthers, nothing. We'll be back right after this from Science Excavating. Signs Excavating of Defiance offers a variety of excavating and trucking services. Signs Excavating can assist with general excavating services, demolition, and emergency repair work. From driveways to ditch cleaning to site prep, Signs Excavating is here to assist. Signs Trucking Service can also assist in any of your equipment hauling needs. They're located at 2147 State Route 66. Signs Excavating, family owned and operated since 1999. For any excavating needs, give Josh a call at 419-769-2290. And for your trucking needs, bring up Brad, 419 419- 9481-3738. Be sure to visit them online at signsexcavating.com or Signs Excavating on Facebook. Signs Excavating wishes all the best to the Tenora Rams athletes. Check out Tenora Rams Live. Live events broadcast on YouTube and post-game results, articles, schedules, and more can all be found on TenoraRams.com. Back at Group Field, the Rams put up four in the bottom of the third inning to grab a four-nothing lead. Top of the fourth inning for the Panthers. The top of the lineup, Jones, Agler, and Foltz. Jones was at the dish when Agler was picked off to end the Panthers' third inning. Rams with five hits. Last inning, they get four runs. Defensive replacement at first base, Trent Wimpkin comes in to play first for Hunter Bosselman. Sometimes they Hunter is Hunter. I don't see anybody down throwing yet, but sometimes BR takes you out and he'll send you down to the pen. But Corbin Castillo through three innings. Those allow just one hit. He's not really going to strike a lot. He only has one strikeout, but Corbin has a lot of all-speed pitches. Nice breaking ball working here tonight for the senior righty, Corbin Castile. Kane Jones 0 for 1. 1, 2, and 3. Jones, Agler, and Fultz will face Corbin Castile. First pitch. A bit high and away. Ball 1. I like you. Pitch number two. The ball, two balls had no strikes. Yeah, he is still. He's still down in America. He's playing Brian. He's good. Castillo winds it up. Pitch to Jones. Catches the inside corner. That's a strike. Castillo, 25 pitches, 17 strikes through three innings. 
two one pitch. Just a bit inside, three and one. Jones digs back in from the left side of the plate. Castillo's three one. That's way inside. Ball four down to first base with a leadoff walk. Will be Panthers Kane Jones. It's the first walk for Castillo. Stepping in, number two hitter Casey Agler. Agler 0 for 1. Popped out to Alex Shovlin the second. First two batters popped out to Shovlin to start the game. Nice lead by the runner at first over there. Kane Jones throw over back safely as Wimpkin puts the third. Yeah, Wimpkin puts the tag on him. Trent Wimpkin in defensively here in the top of the fourth inning. The steal from the stretch comes to the plate. Ground ball over the head of Castillo. Radzik comes on, scoops it up. High throw in time. To get Casey Hagler for out number one. Up to the plate, number five. Like 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 <laughs> Coach Matty A does not agree with that call over there at first base. I think looks are deceiving. I think it was a high throw, but I think Trent kept his foot on the bag. Why you can see that? I seen that he beat the throw. Runner at second now. Kane Jones went over there on the fielder's choice. Ethan Foltz, 0 for 1, flew out to Luke Harris in the first. Breaking ball by Castile. Strike called. 4 0 Rams here in the top of inning number four from Groove Field here at Tenor High School. You better watch it. Castile looks back at Jones at second. From the set comes to the plate. Line drive right through Castillo's legs into center field for a base hit. Hitting the bag at third is Castillo. Ball gets by Gusweiler. Not enough to advance the runner, but Fultz with the line drive back through the box for an RBI single. Puts the Pauline Panthers on the board. They trail 4-1. to one. So Fultz with a smash back through the legs of Castillo. He's on it first, one out. <laughs> Isaac Reeb, first pitch to Reeb, is swung on and missed. No balls, one strike, one out. Rams lead 4 1, runner at first. Ethan Foltz. Steal to the plate, outside, doesn't get the corner. Count to Reeb is 1 and 1. Ward even with the bag at third. Wimpkin holding the runner on at first. Castile from the stretches. 1-1. One, one, swung on and missed. Strike two. One, two. Reeb throws the bat at it. It's a foul over the first base dugout. Count stays at one and two. Next week, the Rams are on the road. Two huge games. Castile's pitch swung on and missed. Reed wants that one back. He went fishing for out number two. Tuesday, the Rams are at Wayne Trace, and then Thursday at Fairview. Yep. Runner at first, now two outs. Castillo to the plate. Breaking ball stays inside to Jacob Martinez. Foltz leads away at first. 1-0 count to Martinez from Castillo. There goes the runner. Pitch hit to center field. Gus Weiler comes in, has a plate on the hop. Panthers are going to have runners at first and third with two outs. A little soft single into right center for Jacob Martinez. 4-1 Rams. Panthers at the corners with two outs. Not a very hard hit ball there. Just hit the right spot. Nick Manns, the number six hitter, checks in. Manns playing in left field for Coach Martin's Panthers. Castile from the set. Looks at the runners, comes to the plate, 
Strike. One called. 1-1 one, one next door at the softball diamond through three over there. Here it is 4-1. Top of the fourth inning. Panthers have plated one. Got runners at the corners with two outs. Castile to the plate. Swung on. Fouled back out of play. No balls and two strikes to Nick Manns. Grayson Harder on deck. Like I said, if you want to watch a replay of this game, we'll have it uploaded tonight. You can watch it tomorrow on YouTube. Providing my SD card last this time. <laughs> oh, two pitch from Castillo. Two mans outside. Ball one. Pitch, good miss. That's great miss. Way out. Way out. Fultz at third, Martinez on at first, Mann's at the dish, one ball, two straight count to him with two outs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Castillo gets the sign from Dalton Wolfram from the stretch, comes to the plate, fouled right back. Yeah. For those of you watching at home, I know you flinched. Yeah, cowboy. Because I did. <laughs> I'm going to do it all over again. Wolfram adjusts his shin guards. One ball, two strike count, two outs. Panthers threatening to add more. And runners at the corners. Steal from the stretch. Pitch coming to Mans. Outside. Wolfram puts the tag on Mans for out number three. Strikeout number three for Castile. In the inning, the Panthers finally break through for one run, and they do so on three base hits. No Ram errors. Panthers leave two after three and a half here from Group Field at Tenora High School. Drop Zone Pizzeria scoreboard shows the Tenora Rams four and the Paulding Panthers one. The Law Office of Wiener Hill, Weber, and Stanley is a full-service law firm dedicated to providing quality legal services in defiance in all of Northwest Ohio. Since 1965, their attorneys have had a well-deserved reputation of excellence in serving clients with a focus on integrity, advocacy, and understanding. At Wiener Hill, Weber, and Stanley, we are a general practice law firm that can handle all of your legal needs. We offer high-quality legal work and personal client service, and each of our attorneys is committed to providing you with top-notch legal support. Attorneys Jim Wiener, Danny Hill, Cam Stanley, and Ian Weber are here to assist you. Give them a call at 419-782-3010 or visit them online at wienerlawoffice.com. The law office of Wiener, Hill, Weber, and Stanley is a proud supporter of the Tenora Rams. Check out Tenora Rams Live. Live events broadcast on YouTube and post-game results, articles, schedules, and more can all be found on tenorarams.com. Check out Tenora. Here comes more Tenora Rams sports action. Bottom part of inning number four from Tenora High School. Rams with a 4-1 lead. Going to send to the dish. B.J. Morlock. No, that's not right, is it? Yeah, it is. B.J. Morlock. Grady Gosweiler on the top. Aiden Mojo. B.J. steps in. Grounded out to the shortstop in the second inning. Rams with a 4-1 lead, four in the third, and for the Tenora and one in the fourth for the Panthers. I like him. Jacob Martinez has gone the distance. He starts from the stretch this time. Comes to the plate, pitch to Morlock, breaking ball, strike called. I wonder if he's still there or not. Jacob Martinez, 69 pitches, 43 strikes. Warlock taps it, just foul, third base side. Wow, that was close. Home plate umpire pops out and immediately says foul ball. Warlock digs back to the plate, picks up his bat, handed to him by Panther catcher, catcher Isaac Reeb. Warlock bats from the right side, DHing for Castile, two shakeoffs. Martinez gets the side he sign he wants. Pitch to Morlock is a little bit low. One ball and two strikes to BJ. One, two count. Strike three called. Morlock caught looking. That's out number one. Going to bring up number nine hitter, Grady Gusweiler. Grady, 0 for 1. Out of the second baseman, his first time up. 
<laughs> you didn't know it though. You got no bone yesterday. That's no balls and no strikes. Pitch. First pitch to Grady. Wind into right field for a solid base hit. Gus Weiler with a one out single. Grady always a threat to go on the base pass. Aiden Mosier, one for two, singled in the third and scored one of the four Rams runs. Reed from the stretch. Grady stays put. Pitch to Aiden is outside. Ball one. Yeah. 1 0 pitch coming to Mosier. Outside, ball two. Runner at first, Gus Weiler. 2 0 pitch coming from Martinez to Mosier. Strike called. Two balls and one strike. One out. Rams lead 4-1 as they bat here in the bottom part of inning number four. Gus Weiler with an opposite field single is on at first. Jacob Martinez 2-1 pitch. Mosier lines it in the hole at second. Nice diving stop over there by Peyton Adams. Gets up. Throws over to first base to get Aiden Mosier for out number one. Out number one, round number two, actually. Nice play by Peyton Adams. Gus Weiler moved over to second base on the grounder in the hole. It's going to bring up Caden Radzik. Caden singled and scored in the third. He is one for two. <laughs> Martinez pitched to Radzik outside, ball one. Trying to get the score of Defiance game. I'll try and do that in between innings because I've got my hotspot on my phone and if I touch too many buttons, bad things happen. What <laughs> one whole pitch coming. <laughs> Gus Meyer leads from second. Pitch to Radzik is inside. Corner strike called. She did. Uh, Brady leads from second. Martinez, 1-1 one, one pitch coming to Caden Radzik. Radzik slaps it inside the bag at third. Throw a little bit low over there at first base. Scooped up nicely by Panther first baseman Casey Agler to retire the Rams and Radzik. In the inning for the Rams, they get no runs, one hit. No an no errors. The Rams leave one after four innings of play here at Groove Field at Tenora High School. Drop zone pizzeria scoreboard is Tenora four and the Paulding Panthers one. We'll be back right after this time out. Drop Zone Pizzeria in Ayersville and Stryker offers the area's best pizza, wings, subs, and calzones. In fact, Drop Zone Pizzeria was voted the area's best pizza in 2020 and again for 2022. From pickle pizza to pilot bread to grandma pizza, Drop Zone Pizzeria is always looking outside the pizza box for something special for their fantastic customers. Order by calling in Ayersville at 419-395-2525 or in Stryker at 419-990-2525. Hours of operation close Monday, Tuesday through Thursday, and Sunday, 4 to 8 p.m., Friday and Saturday till 9. Drop Zone Pizzeria now with two locations, downtown Ayersville at 13995 Fruit Ridge Road and also at 301 South Defiant Street in downtown Stryker. Stop in at the Stryker location for a bite of ice cream. Visit them on Facebook at the Drop Zone Pizzeria where online ordering is available. And remember, the Drop Zone Pizzeria says go Rams! Back at Sonora High School, it's 4-1 Rams heading to the top of inning number five over at Wapakoneta. Defiance six. Wapakoneta nothing. Defiance with six runs in the first inning. Smoke your cigars. Rams with four in the third. Panthers with one in the fourth. Seven, eight, nine to bat against Corbin Castile. Grayson Harder, Peyton Adams, and Larkin Yates. Harder 0 for 1. Flew out to Aiden Mosier in the third on a heck of a catch by Aiden. He spun about six different ways before he finally 
turned and caught it. First pitch is a ball to Harder. Castillo winds it up, breaking ball up and in, count two balls and no strikes. You're supposed to have better range. I'm going to wait. Grayson. Wimpkin remains in the game over at first. Swung on, hit over the head of the shortstop into left center field for a base knock. Harder with a smash over the head of Radzik for a leadoff single. Now batting number three, Peyton Adams. The fifth hit off Castile. They had one through the first three, and they had three last inning. And one here to lead off activity in the bullpen. Eli Plasman heads down. First pitch from Castile to Adams fouled off. Strike one. 4 1 Rams here in the top of the fifth inning. Runner at first is Grayson Harder at the plate. Peyton Adams, Larkin Yates on deck. Castile's gone the distance. 4 to North throw over. Barely a lead for Harder. But the Rams do have a runner picked off here tonight. Top of the fifth inning, we're about an hour and ten minutes into the game. It was 50 degrees at the start on your David Frank weather forecast. That pitch catches the outside corner. Quickly down the count, Peyton Adams, no balls and two strikes. Castile from the set, his 0-2 pitch. A little blooper right in front of Harrison, right field, little hit. We'll put runners at first and second with nobody out. Adams just served it out there. One hopped right in front of the Rams right fielder, Luke Harris. Plasman trying to get heated up down there. Eli pitched five innings on Tuesday. Timeout, head coach Brent Renolette is going to make an appearance to the mound. Infield will join him. Harder singled. Peyton Adams fouled with another single, so Harder's at second. Adams is at first. The number nine hitter, Larkin Yates, is going to step in. Yates singled in the third. Plasman's ready. He's going to come in, so we're going to have a pitching change here at Sonora High School. Rams lead 4-1. Top of the fifth inning. Panthers have two on with nobody out. We'll be back after this pitching change here on Sonora Rams Live with the Rams leading by a score of 4-1. to one. Looking for an opportunity where you can grow your career, be appreciated, and be an owner where you work? Did we say owner? Yes! Mech is an employee-owned company that is highly motivated and actively supports the communities in which our facilities are located. Mayville Engineering needs you. Mech is an employee-owned business where our focus is on our customers' success. Mech has been named the nation's number one fabricator for 12 consecutive years in a survey published by the Fabricator magazine. Join the Mech family today. Full and part-time positions are available. $1,000 sign-on on bonus, 401k, vacation and holiday pay, gain sharing program, employee stock ownership, medical, dental, and vision insurance, short-term and long-term disability, and shift premiums for second and third shift. Visit our website, mechinc.com. Click on careers or visit the 21 Seneca Street lobby at the Defiance location. Back here at Sonora, Panthers threatening have runners at first and second with nobody out. Eli Plasman coming off that five-inning shutout win versus Elmwood steps in for Castile. His line is not complete. He pitched four innings, allowed four hits, struck out three, walk one, but the two runners on base are his responsibilities. Expect a bunt here. Karen Ward at third for the Rams, playing even with the bag. Wimpkin at first and about a foot on the cut of the grass. Radzik close to the bag at second. Harder at second. Adams at first. Yates at the plate. Bats from the left side. First pitch by Plasman is inside. Here you go, Larkin. One ball. You got him. Yates, the number nine hitter. Pitch. Yeah. Swung on, drill just foul down the right field line. That would have scored one, if not two. Panthers running around the bases. That was clearly foul. <laughs> I don't know what they were doing. 
Oh, exerted a lot of energy there. Yeah, I don't know if that wasn't a clear call by the umpire or what, but. Be a little gassed after that. It's like running wind sprint. <laughs> it's 180, 180 feet. They just covered. 1-1 one, one pitch coming from Plasman to Yates. Runners, Plasman, as for time, Dalton Wolfram going to head out, make sure they got the signs right. Rams had four runs in the third. Panthers with one in the fourth. They are threatening to add more. 2-1, nobody out here in the fifth inning. GMC opener for both teams. Last year, they had a humdinger over at Balding. Trying to equal that here tonight. Plasman from the stretch looks back at the runner harder a second. Comes to the dish. Yates, ground ball, first base side. Whipkin scoops it up, touches the bag for out number one. As good as a sacrifice. Harder goes down to third. Adams on at second. First out. Ground ball to Whipkin. Three unassisted on the out. Top of the lineup, Kane Jones. Jones. 0 for 1, walked and scored in the fourth inning for the lone Panther run. 4 1 Rams here in the fifth inning. Jones at the plate, bats from the left side. Plasman on the relief, first pitch is low. Nice stop by Rams backstop, Dalton Wolfram. Come on, Dave, here we go. <laughs> Harder at third, Adams at second, Jones at the dish, one out. Plasma in relief of Castile from the set comes to the plate. Swung on and miss. Count evens at one and one. Karen Ward even with the bag at first. Wimpkin playing back. Or Karen Ward with the even with the bag at third. Wimpkin back at first. Plasma long look in, gets the sign. Jones says that's too long. I'm gonna step out. Gather everything back up. Kane Jones digs back in. Plasma. Steps off the mound. Now gets back on the mound. Now Jones steps out. It's kind of cat and mouse here. Runners lead from second and third for Paulding. Plasman set. 1-1 one, one pitch to Jones. Swung on. Fouled off down the left field line. Out of play. That was high and away. Jones tried to slap it into left field there. One ball, two strike to Kane Jones. One out. Top of the fifth inning. Rams lead four to one. Thanks for joining us here on Tenor Rams Live. One, two pitch from Plasman to Jones. Swung on and miss. Huge strikeout for Eli Plasman for out number two. Number six, Casey Adler. Oh, this is great. Thank you. He's my favorite. Casey Agler, the number two hitter. First baseman, 0 for 2. Digs in. Two has, still has two ducks on the pond out there. It's second and third for the Panthers. Plasman sets. Comes to the plate. Strike call on the outside corner. Not sure how many pitches Eli has left tonight, but try and get that number for you if I can. 0-1 pitch, same spot, just a bit outside, doesn't get the call. Count evens at one ball, one strike, two outs. 4-1 Rams in the fifth, Panthers runners at second and third. Agler digs in, now he steps out. Coach Barton giving some hand signal instructions to his base runners and to Casey Agler. Plasman's pitch, high and away. Wolfram has to jump outside to snag that one. Two balls and one strike to the number two hitter, Casey Agler. Ethan Foltz awaits on deck for the Panthers. I mowed yesterday. Two, one, pitch to Plasman. Outside. Does not get the call again. Three pitches, almost the same exact spot. Rhubarb, she put strawberry. Three balls and one strikes. The count to Casey Agler. Panthers runners lead from second and third. Plasma steps off the mound. Now he gets back on top. Umpire says we're ready. 3-1 from Plasma to Agler. Ooh, yeah. Swung on. Little soft liner into right field. Going out. Alex Shoblin makes a nice over-the-shoulder catch to retire. Casey Agler. That was trouble. Harris coming in. Shoblin going out. Shoblin like a receiver. 
down the sideline, caught it over his shoulder. Nice running catch. Alex Shoblin to retire. Casey Agler for out number three. Panthers threaten. They do not score in the inning for Paulding. No runs. They get one hit. No Rams errors. They leave two after four and a half here at Tenora High School. Tenora four and the Paulding Panthers one. Are you tired of losing money on your 401k or other retirement accounts? Well, you're not alone. Do what many area residents have done and call Postoma Insurance and Investments. With safe money strategies offered to you by PI&I, you can still have the benefits of market earnings without the risk of taking market loss. Sound too good to be true? Give us a call and with experienced agents at PI&I will work with you to understand how you can do just that. If you're more interested in the CD style accounts but are fed up with low CD rates, PI&I agents can set you up with an account with rates currently as high as 5. 5% fixed with certain restrictions apply. Call us today at 419-782-2500 to help you set up a plan that meets your investment goals. That's 782-2500. Postuma Insurance and Investments, protecting everything you've worked for. Still got time to get your taxes out there to Postuma Insurance and Investments. They can take care of you. My wife had taken her taxes out there for about the last decade. Fantastic people out there. Or you can get one of the fine plans that Michael just mentioned. I'm sure that he and they would appreciate that as well. Chowlin, fantastic play to end the inning, steps in to lead off the Rams fifth. Three, four, and five. Shoblin, Ward, and Harris to face Jacob Martinez. First pitch is a strike. Martinez, 81 pitches, 50 strikes through four innings. How old is that guy? This is the guy who is the cameraman for my. Martinez from the stretch, which is the Shoblin. Must be a bit inside and low. Count evens at one ball and one strikes. Martinez seems to have thrown out the windup. I thought I showed third baseman in at the cut of the grass, Grayson Harder for the Panthers. You do not remember. Okay. Well, one one pitch to Shoblin swung on and missed. And I'm not sure if that's a smart idea on on this artificial turf with Shoblin at the plate. Takes another step in. About a foot on the grass. One two pitch from Sh to Shoblin. Small on hit right at the third baseman. Harder scoops it up, fires over in time to get Shoblin. No, that shows what I know. Absolutely nothing. Shoblin's retired for out number one. Five three on the put out. That's gonna bring up Taryn Ward, who had a huge two out RBI double to score two runs in the Rams four run third inning. Yeah, Actually, there was only one out at that time. Right. One out double for Karen Ward. So Ward digs in. He is two for two. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pitch to Ward. Outside corner. Strike call. So Corbin can steal. His line is complete. He does not allow any runs through his four innings of work. We called him Shorty. Oh, one pitch to Ward for Martinez. That's low. Count evens. One ball, one strike, one out, nobody on. Rams four, Panthers one. Rams batting here in the bottom part of inning number five. I could have said Buford. One, one pitch. Tap. Third base side. Another nice play by Grayson Harder. Throws over to first base. In time to get Ward for out number two. Back-to-back 5-3 -back plays. That's going to bring up Luke Harris. Harris with a suicide squeeze bunt in the third inning, which actually played at two runs. He gets credit for one. Two outs. Ward scored on the throw down to first base. Nice hustle by Taron Ward on that play. First pitch to Karras' ball one. One oh pitch to Harris outside. Two balls and no strikes. Base is empty. Rams up 4-1 as a bat here in the bottom part of inning number five. Turn into a nice evening here at Groove Field at Tenora High School. 
pitch is up and in. 3-0 to Luke. David Frank first pitch. Weather was 51 degrees. <laughs> Wind still blowing out the center field. Not quite as strong as what it was earlier. Probably about 8 miles an hour. Enough to make the flag move. 3-0 pitch inside. Harris with a two-out walk. But trot down to first base. Dalton Wolfram going to step in. Dalton grounded the short in the second and singled in the third. Dalton with a long walk one, long walk in. Wanted to make sure he got his full intro song in. <laughs> and he made sure he did that. Martinez from the stretch comes to the plate. Wolfram winds it into right center field. Harris hits the bag at second. Jones fields it cleanly, fires it in to hold Harris at third. Wolfram with a smash into right center field. Nice play out there by Kane Jones. Any sort of bobble whatsoever and BR sending Luke because Luke had a full head of steam as he hit the bag at third. Wolfram at first, Harris at third. Hunter Bosselman's going to step in. Hunter, 0 for 2, struck out his last plate appearance. Rams up 4-1. An additional run here would look really nice. It's 4-1. Just a three-run cushion for the Rams. Jacob Martinez has gone the distance for the Panthers. Actually pitched pretty well. Four earned runs for Martinez. First pitch to Bosselman. Swung on and missed. Strike one. 93 pitches for Martinez. 56 strikes. He's allowed six hits. Four runs. Struck out three and has walked three Rams. Runners at the corners. Two outs. Martinez looks over at the runner at first. Now the runner at third comes to the plate. Pitch to Bosselman. Up and in. Count evens at one and one. Wolfram trying to get caught in the rundown. They throw down there. So Wolfram with a indirect stolen base. Panthers really weren't going to fall for it. Coach Barton definitely as the Panthers a well-coached team. 1-1 one, one pitch to Bosselman. That's low in front of the plate. Nice stop by Isaac Reeb, the Panther backstop. Sun finally peeks through here at Groob Field. Three quarters of the way through. Two balls, one strike to Hunter Bosselman. Two outs. Rams with the runners at second and third now. <laughs> Martinez stretches. Pitch to Bosselman. Lined into left field for a solid base hit. That's going to score Harris. Bosselman with an RBI single. It's going to give the Rams a 5-1 to one lead. Going to bring up Riley Peters. So Peters will hit for B.J. Morlock. Morlock was 0 for 2 while he was in there. So Peters steps in with runners at the corners and again with Bosselman at first and Dalton Wolfram now at third. More than likely, <laughs> I started laughing. I started laughing my Hunter will try and get caught in a rundown. And, uh, there is two outs, so Dalton will have to get on his horse, which we just heard in his pregame song that he certainly can do that. <laughs> Pitch to Peters is outside corner. Strike one called. Bosselman looking down at BR. Gets the sign. Peters steps back in. Bosselman stays put. Now he takes off. Throw down the third. Wolfram dives back in safely. So Bosselman trots down to second. Reeb, instead of throwing down to second, fired back to try and get Dalton Wolfram caught off third. So Peters at the dish. One ball, one strike, two outs. Runners at second and third for Tenor. They lead 5-1 here in the bottom part of inning number five. Martinez from the stretch. Jacobs pitch to Peters is low. Whoa, they called that a strike. One ball, two strikes now to Riley Peters wearing number 10 on his gray Tenora uniform. 
<laughs> Runners lead from second and third. Martinez, long look in, gets the sign from Reeve. His one two coming to Peters. Breaking ball inside corner. Strike three call. Peters call looking. Rams do get an insurance run here in the fifth inning. They do so. One run, two hits. No Panthers errors. The Rams leave two on base. Heading to the sixth inning here at Tenor High School at Group Field. Tenor five. And holding one on your drop zone pizzeria scoreboard. We'll be right back after this time out. Optimal Performance Fitness is not just your typical gym. Here at OPF, you don't pay for a membership just to hop on a treadmill. We are a fitness coaching center that strives to provide an experience like no other. We provide accountability and results. You either work one-on-one -on -one with a certified personal trainer or in a group setting with like-minded people. Here at OPF, we want to change your mindset of going to the gym into something that you enjoy and look forward to doing rather than going to the gym merely. To work out, we train at OPF. We are your cheering section, your motivators, and so to be family. Optimal Performance Fitness strives to help you achieve the best version of yourself. Contact us today to take that first step. It could be life-changing. Stop with all the excuses. Let's roll up our sleeves and get to work. Call Jake at 419-438-7265 and get started today at Optimal Performance Fitness. Here at Tenora, it's 5-1 as we head to the top of the six. Next door to Softball Diamond is 4-1 Lady Rams as they head to the bottom of the sixth inning. For the Panthers, they're going to send 3, 4, and 5 to face Eli Plasman. Plasman, very effective inning of relief of Corbett Castillo, who pitched very well. Corbin, four innings, four hits, three strikeouts, one walk did not allow. Or I guess he did allow one run. One of those runs scored last inning. First pitch is called a ball to Ethan Foltz. Plasman winds it up. Outside, ball two. Foltz flew out to Luke Harris in the first inning to right field and had an RBI single in the fourth. Plasman winds up his 2-0 pitch, swung on, getting into the gap in right center. Harris cruises over, makes the catch for out number one. Going to bring up now, Isaac Reeb. Isaac Reeb. Reeb steps in, 0 for 2, struck out. His last plate appearance struck out swinging. The pitch that was a bit outside. I she had that at bat back, actually. Plasman winds it up. First pitch. Strike called. No balls and one strike to Isaac Reeb. Jacob Martinez on deck for the Panthers. Panthers' low run came in the fourth inning. Plasman zone one. Swung on. High pop, shallow center field. Radzik goes out there, puts it away. Right, kind of like a triangle out there. Gus Weiler and Mosher came running in. Radzik came running out. Caden called them all off to put it away for out number two. Jacob Martinez steps in. Martinez one for two, singled in the fourth. As the sun pops back through here at Group Field. Strike. No, oh, just a bit high in the zone. 5 1 Rams lead here in the top of the sixth inning. Plasman, one in the third innings of relief. 1 0 pitch. Swung on, tap third base side. Ward up with it. Throw over. Dug out. No, not dug out. Possible back in the game at first. Low throw by Ward. Now at the plate, number Get about a foot in front of Bosselman over at first base. He couldn't scoop it up. So Martinez is on with a two out <laughs> error. Error on Ward at third. Going to bring up Nick Manns. Manns 0 for 2 with two strikeouts. Runner on at first, two outs, 5 1 Rams as the Panthers bat here in the sixth. First pitch, foul back, strike one. Plasman, one of the third innings of relief, has yet to allow a hit. Struck out one and has not walked anybody. 
Thanks again, everybody, for tuning in. We appreciate it. Old Tapper, shortstop side. Radzik up with it. Long throw over. This time, no, gets by Bosselman again. Well. Runner Jacob Martinez scoots all the way over to third. Mans on at first. Another error by the Rams. Two errors in a row. Put Panthers at the corners with two outs. 5-1 Tenora. Going to bring up the third baseman, Grayson Harder. Harder singled in the fifth. Throw over to first base, back with a head first dive is Mans. Rams infield doing plasma no favors here. Oh, one pitch swung on. Foul territory. Plasman Ward. Ward calls off Plasman. Puts it away about two feet in foul territory to retire the side. Grayson Harder skies it in foul territory. Ward puts it away. Paulding in the inning. No runs. No hits. Two Ram errors. Two Panthers left on base. Heading to bottom part of inning number six here at Groove Field at Tenora High School. Drop Zone Pizzeria shows the Tenora Rams five and the Paulding Panthers one. We'll be back right after this time out. Okalona Tavern, located in downtown Okalona, is the home of the famous Oki Tavern Wings. Stop in after the game and get some delicious wings, burgers, fries, onion rings, and enjoy a nice cold beverage while talking about the game. Hours of operation are Tuesday to Sunday, opening at 4 p.m. Check out the Okalona Tavern on Facebook for a menu before you head out. Mexican food specials every Thursday and Sunday. The Okalona Tavern, a proud supporter of the Tenora Rams. Here comes more Tenora Rams sports action. Back here at Groove Field is 5-1 Rams. Rams tried to get the Panthers back into it. Three field and three, two throwing errors by Radzik and Ward. But Plasma got harder to pop out to Terran Ward at third to end the Panthers' threat in the sixth inning. Rams going to send up bottom part of the order. Grady Gusweiler, number Nine hitter, then the top, Mosier and Radzik. And a new pitcher for the Panthers. On the hill will be Peyton Adams. So Adams replaces Martinez. Five one Rams here in the bottom part of inning number six. Lady Rams are up four one. I was trying to get a box score there, and I'm afraid to, like I said, I'm afraid to touch my phone when I use that as my hotspot. Skyly's gone six innings, allowed two hits, one run, struck out eight, and walked two. While Mendez, Tia Mendez, five innings. Six runs, struck out five, walked two. So it's 6-1, Lady Rams next door as they bat in the bottom of inning number six. Here, as we said, it's 5-1 Sonora as the Rams. Grady Gusweiler will step to the plate against a new pitcher, Peyton Adams. Up to bat, number 25, Brady Gusweiler. I'm going to find my Game Changer app, which is very handy. As I said, for the teams that use it, it's a, it's a godsend at times. Panthers 2-4. and four. We said Coach Martin likes to load up their non-conference schedule early. 2-4 and four could easily be 3-2 and two or 4-2. and two. Adams' first pitch to Gusweiler is a called strike. I won't. Adams winds it up. Pitch to Gus Weiler. Inside ball one. Pitch shortstop side. Throw over in time. Ethan Foltz over to Casey Agler to retire Grady. Six, three for the putout. That's out number one here in the sixth inning. 
top of the lineup, Aiden Mosier steps in. Mosier is one for three, singled and scored in the third inning. Rams with four in the third and one in the fifth. Panthers with a single run in the fourth, 5-1 to Nora Mosier. Digs in from the left side of the plate. Adams winds it up. The righty fires outside. Ball one. Peyton Adams, a senior. Just going to say that about every Panther. Seven seniors for Coach Barton. 1-0 pitch to Mosier is inside. Ball two. Two balls and no strike to Aiden. Two zero pitch by Adams. It's been a little bit low. Three zero. Martinez moves over to third for Coach Barton. Three zero pitch to Mosier. Strike on the outside corner. Harder moved over to first. Pitch to Mosier is a ball, so Aiden with a one-out walk trots down to first base. It's going to bring up Caden Radzik. Radzik steps in. One for three, singled and scored a run in the Rams' four-run third inning. Raiden gets, Caden gets some instructions from head coach Rowlett down at third base. Mosier on at first, definitely a threat to go. Adams from the set position comes to the plate. Pitch to Radzik, outside corner, strike call. No balls, one strike, one out. Bottom of the sixth inning, Rams lead by four here at Groove Field at Sonora High School. Adams from the stretch comes to the plate. There goes Mosier, throw down, not in time. Mosier with a head first dive into second base with a stolen base. Mr. Razik was a ball, one ball, one strike, one out. Rams with a or two ball, oh ball, no balls and two strikes. Razik smashes it right at the shortstop. Foltz throws over in time to get Razik moving over to third is Mosier. Shoblin's going to step in. 6 3 on the put out for out number two. Shoblin walked in the first, singled and scored a run in the third, and probably the most important part, defensively, had a heck of a catch out there in shallow right field in the fourth inning. Pitch to Shoblin as a strike. Martinez pitched five innings, allowed seven hits, five runs, five earned runs, struck out four, and walked three. Pitch to Shaolin's tap foul, third base side. Through 101 pitches, 61 strikes. Adams gets the sign, runner with third, Mosier with two outs. 0 2 pitch to Shaolin. Serves it foul just over the head of Coach Tipton down there at first base. Last year, I think it was on a Saturday game, somebody smashed one down the first base. Coach Tipton, as most coaches do, put their hand out there to grab it. And that's one of those where Coach Tipton immediately is like, uh, I shouldn't have done that. 0-2 pitch, breaking ball, hammered into left field for a solid base hit. Scoring is Aiden Mosier from third. Shoblin with a two-out RBI single to put the Rams up 6-1 here in the sixth inning. So Coach Tipton comes up after the game, of course, and he's like, oh, man, I should have did that. So he shows us his hand, and his three fingers are like black and blue and swollen. He's like, I'm not doing that again. 6-1 Rams here in the bottom part of the sixth inning. Karen Ward digs in. There goes the runner, pinch runner down there for the Rams. Connor Wolfram with the stolen base. So Connor 
with the stolen base here in the sixth inning. Pitch running for Shalman. Wolfram leads from second. Pitch to Ward. Outside corner. Count evens at one ball, one strike. Throw down. Gets away. Wolfram tries to get the third throw. Nice throw. Safe. Third baseman down there, Jacob Martinez. The throw beat Connor. I think Martinez dropped the ball, so Connor is down at third base with two outs. One ball, one strike to Taryn Ward. Ward, a single and a double, and two RBIs. Pitch. Swung on, foul, or hit deep to center field, taking about five steps back out there as Kane Jones retires Taryn Ward for out number three. The Rams get another run here in the sixth inning. They do so. They get one run. The Rams get one hit. One error for the Panthers, and the Rams leave one on base. The Rams have left the runner on every time except the second inning. Seven left on for Tenora. Through six innings of play here at Tenora High School, it is Tenora six, and the Paulding Panthers one. We'll be back right after this here on Tenora Rams Live. Have your hair and nails gotten out of control over the past few months? Cut and Polish Salon of Defiance is your local salon to get all pampered up. Cut and Polish Salon offers a vast range of quality services, including haircuts, highlights, specialty coloring, waxing, manicures, and pedicures. Please schedule a visit at their fun, relaxing salon where you can be sure that all of your hair and nail needs are a top priority. Cut and Polished Hair and Nail Salon is located at 413 Hopkins Street in Defiance. Be sure to book your appointment today by calling 419-576-5087 or do your booking online by visiting their Facebook page. Cut and Polished Salon says, remember, it's all fun and games until someone breaks a nail. Cut and Polished Salon is a proud supporter of Tenora Rams Live. Back at Sonora High School, 6-1 Rams lead as we head to the seventh inning. Eli Plasman on the hill in his soon-to-be third inning of relief. Corbin Casile started with the first four, allowed five hits, one run, one earned run, struck out three, walked one. Peyton Adams is going to step in. Eight, nine, and one to face Plasman. Peyton Adams, Larkin Yates, and then the top, Kane Jones. Stay tuned. Going to have the Higby Embroidery Player of the Game Award and the Rams win. First pitch is outside, ball one, and the Didlack Insurance and Investments post-game show will be coming up afterwards as well. Plasman works from the windup, 1-0 pitch, strike called on the outside corner, count evens, one ball and one strike No, no. to Peyton Adams. Late, yeah, they gave us a couple of Breaking ball strike two. Nice pitch by Plasman. Adams one for two, singled in the fifth. Plasman's one, two, strike three called. Adams caught looking for out number one here in the seventh inning. Number nine hitter Larkin Yates steps in. Okay. Yates, one for two, singled in the third. Bats from the left side. Plasman winds her up. Strike on the outside corner. Yates, one for two. Senior righty Eli Plasman winds it up. His 0-1 pitch stays a little bit outside. Count evens at one ball, one strike, one out, 6-1 Rams here in the top of the seventh inning. Bases are empty. No activities tomorrow on Good Friday, and the Rams will be playing at Bedford, Michigan on Saturday. That's a 2 p.m. start. Pitches inside, two balls and one strike. The Lady Rams, I believe, have a doubleheader at Wasian on Saturday. Oh, geez. Oh, yeah, yeah. 2 1 pitch from Plasman to Yates. Yates lines it into right field just out of the dive of Luke Harris. Harris moves into second base. Connor Wolfram out there in right. So Yates with a one out single. Covering the top of the lineup. Kane Jones. Likely you don't like me. Kane Jones steps in. He is. I imagine he was. 
0 for 2 with a walk and a strikeout. He scored a run, throw over to first base, back with the dive is Larkin Yates. Casey Aguilar on deck. So Wolfram is in right, Gus Weiler in center, Mosier in left, Ward at third. The strike called, Radzik is short. Harris moves in to play second base, and Hunter Bosselman back in at first. Dalton Wolfram behind the plate, and Eli Plasman on in relief for Corbin Castile. Plasman's 0-1, breaking ball way outside. One ball, one strike, one out. I didn't know you. Rams up 6-1. Oh, I know. Four in the third, one in the fifth, and one in the sixth for the Rams six. Pauling with one in the fourth. Plasman's pitch. Fouled off third base side. One ball, two strikes to count. To leadoff hitter Kane Jones. He originally from here. He graduated from here. I had him. I had him. But he's at Perryford now. Yeah. Plasman throws over back is Yates. Yates not that far off. Oh. Yeah. Plasman comes to the plate. The pitch stays a little bit outside. Count evens at two balls and two strikes. Plasman two and a third. Yeah. One day. 34 pitches, 21 strikes for Eli. Yeah, yeah. Another throwback order first base back is Yates. Two balls, two strikes, one out. To Kane Jones. Jones backs out. What's he call you? Digs back in from the left side of the plate. Plasman from the stretch. Comes set. Pitches fouled back. Count stays even at two balls and two strikes. I guess when I say dig in with the Rams' new turf here, you can't really dig in. For some people, that's like big adjustment that you can't actually set your feet. 2-2 two -two pitch coming from Plasma to Jones. Breaking ball way outside. Count goes full at 3-2. and two. You're used to going all the way up through Little League and T-ball. You kind of, you know, dig your foot in a little bit back there. But on the turf, there's no digging. Jones hammers it. Center field. Gus Weiler turns. Watches it go over his head. Hitting second is Yates. He's on his way to third. He stops there at third. Jones was in his big hurry. That's a double for Kane Jones. He was almost on the heels of Yates. He had to turn around and go back and get back to second base. Had the... Somebody come over and covered second base. I think they would have had a chance to get Jones out. No activity, no activity in the Rams bullpen. Jones is on at second. Yates is on at third. One out. Rams lead 6-1 here in the top of inning number seven. Plasma on the hill for the Rams. On a relief of Corbin Castillo, who worked a very effective four innings. Plasman's pitch up and away. Ball one. On deck, Ethan Foltz for the Panthers. Plasman looks back at the runners, comes set. 1-0 pitch is called a strike. One ball, one strike, one out. Panthers have runners at second and third. They trail by five here in their last at bat. Plasman looks back at the runner, comes to the dish. Breaking ball just a oh. bit high. Good Everybody up here, we're not umpires, but that looked good. Two balls, one strike, the pitch. Swung on, fouled off, first base side, giving chase. Diving as Harris runs into Bosselman. Both 100% effort by both players. They just couldn't catch it. Back to the dishes, Agler. Two balls, two strikes to Casey. One out. Panthers threatening here. Trailing by five. Agler at the plate. Goes back, retrieves the bat. Agler 0 for 3. Plasman sets. Looks at the runners. His 2-2 two -two pitch. Foul back. Count stays 2-2. Two two. <laughs> 
Hopefully everybody enjoys their Easter weekend coming up. Some people will get a three-day weekend. Enjoy that. 2-2 two -two pitch is hammered. Right center field. That's going to plate two. Scoring is Yates. Scoring is Jones. Panthers have cut the lead in half at 6-3. to three. Agler with a two RBI single. Says Rams have no activity in the pen. This Plasman pitched on Tuesday for the Rams. Got the win versus Elmwood. Agler at first leads away, stepping in. Ethan Foltz. Fultz, one for three, throw over the first base, back with the dive is Agler. <laughs> this is the meat of the order here. This is three, four, and five against Plasman with basically one day rest. Outside, ball one. One ball, no strikes, one out, runner at first for the Panthers. They have scored two here in the seventh. Rams lead 6-3. Plasman throws over. Not really a big lead over there by Agler just yet. Go on, get him. Go get the hey, Coach Barton, like the last thing we need right now is to have somebody picked off. Isaac Reeb on deck. On, get Reeb. I don't know if a superstition or what go still has his catching gear on. He ain't going anywhere. Yeah. No. 1-0 pitch from Plasman to the plate. Outside strike called. Get the hair. Get the hair here, too. Come on. Plasman, 45 pitches, 28 strikes here. Your neck and compete. Two in the third innings in relief. Plasman's 1-1. Out of baby. Strike two called. Fultz down in the count, one and two. Wow. Lady Rams with a, I think we said, 6-1 uh, win next door. Track finishing up over here as well. Go get him now. 1-2 pitch from Plasman to Fultz. Way. Nice job. Outside. Nice stop by Dalton Wolfram. Count evens at 2-2. Two and two. Panthers have scored two. Still trail by three. They need runners. Plasman's 2-2 to Fultz. Swung on and missed. Strike three. Down goes Fultz. Route number two. Second strikeout for Plasman. Last chance for the Panthers. Isaac Reeb. Go get him now. Here. Reeb 0 for three. Runner at first. Two outs now for the Panthers. Plasman comes set. Pitch stays just a hair outside. Ball one. And I'm so close to you. you know, all that? That was really on you there. <laughs> hey, here we go. Ned, here we go. As you guys can tell, Ned's back. Go get him. <laughs> what a pitch coming from Plasman. Got a boy. Outside oh. corner strike called. Count evens at one ball, one strike, two outs. Runner at first. Rams lead 6-3. Here's the Panthers bat at the top of inning number seven. Plasman throws over. Back with the head first dive is Agler. Pitch, little blooper. Mosier comes in. Gus Weiler cuts in front, puts it away. Ooh. Somebody call it out there. Grady did. Out number three. Reed flies out to Gus Weiler in center to end the threat in the inning for the Panthers. They do score one run. They do so on three hits. Rams had no errors. The Panthers leave one on base. Final from Tenora. Tenora Rams stay unbeaten. They improve to 4-0 with a 6-3 win over the Panthers. Stay tuned. Coming up, you're going to have the Bidlack insurance and investments post-game show when we will do it right after this time out. Looking for home or auto insurance? What about building for retirement? Or looking to start a small investment portfolio for your family? Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services of Defiance has you covered. Tim Bidlack of Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services has over 10 years of investment experience. Tim can assist in estate planning, IRAs, 401k investments, among other financial planning areas. Need home or auto insurance? Welcome Austin Bidlack. He can assist you on those. At Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services, they will work one-on-one -on -one with you to make sure your home, auto, and business are protected. 
protected. Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services are located at 912 East 2nd Street in Defiance. Call Tim or Austin at 419-438-0023 today for a free quote. You can visit them online or on their Facebook page as well. Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services wish the best to all the Tenora Rams athletes this season. Northwest Ohio Sports is the place for sports rankings, news, scores, podcasts, and more for area athletics. Check them out at Northwest Ohio Sports on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Back to the action on Tenora Rams Sports Live. Back at Tenora High School, Rams with it. Turn into an exciting 6-3 win over the Paulding Panthers. Well, what a game it was. Rams with four in the third, one in the fifth, and one in the sixth for their sixth. The Rams had eight hits and two errors. Paulding with one run in the fourth and two in the seventh. Paulding with three runs, eight hits, and two errors. Winning pitcher was Corbin Castile. Four innings pitched, five hits, one run, one earned run. Corbin struck out three and walk one. Nice relief outing for Eli Plasma. As we said, Eli coming off that five-inning shutout versus Elmwood on Tuesday. Came back on Thursday, pitched three innings, allowed three hits, two runs, two earned runs. Struck out three and did not allow a walk. For the Panthers, they started... Jacob Martinez, he pitched five innings, allowed seven hits, five runs, five earned runs, struck out four, and walked three. Peyton Adams came in, pitched one inning of relief. Adams allowed one hit, one run that was earned, did not strike anybody out, and walked one. So thank you to Mr. Tim Bidlack, the Bidlack Insurance and Investments, for sponsoring the post-game show. Rams off tomorrow. They'll be at Bedford, Michigan on Saturday. I believe Bridget said that's a 2 p.m. start. I will not cover that game, unfortunately. have family dinners to go to and whatnot, so try and keep you guys updated. Told Bridget to text me the score. So the Rams do improve to 4-0. Two huge game next week in the GMC where the Rams travel... We said Saturday, non-league game at Bedford, Michigan, and then at Wayne Trace on Tuesday and Thursday at Fairview. So a 6-3 win puts the Rams at 4-0. Polling falls to 2-5. Stay tuned. Coming up, we will have the Higby Embroidery Player of the Game, and we will do so right after this time out. Higby Embroidery of Defiance offers custom screen printing and custom embroidery to local high schools and individuals from all areas. Connie Higby and her staff have been serving and supporting Tenora High School as well as the Tri-County area since 1999. From throws to t-shirts to school jackets and much, much more, Higby Embroidery is here to serve your custom needs. Higby Embroidery also offers custom artwork if it is needed to complete your project. Higby Embroidery is located at 1940 East 2nd Street right here in Defiance, Ohio. Contact them at 419 419- 428-3000 or visit them online at Higby.com or Higby Embroidery on Facebook. If you are looking for a customizable item, Higby Embroidery is your place. Higby Embroidery, a proud sponsor of the Tenora Rams Live Player of the Game Award. Back at Tenora High School here at Groove Field, the Rams with a 6-3 win over the Paulding Panthers to improve to 4-0 and on the season. Welcome to the Higby Embroidery Player of the Game Award. Sponsored by Connie Higby at Higby Embroidery for all your embroidery and any needs. T-shirts, jackets, varsity jackets. Make sure you get a hold of Connie. Been supporting area high schools for, seems like, about three decades, which it may actually be three decades. Our Higby Embroidery Player of the Game Award tonight goes to Rams senior writer Corbin Castile. Corbin picked up the win, pitched four innings, allowed five hits, one run, just one earned run, struck out three, and walked one. So congratulations to Rams senior writer Corbin Castile, your Higby Embroidery Player of the Game. Rams with a 6-3 win. Thanks to you for tuning in, and as always... Thanks. 
to our fantastic sponsors. We have the best sponsors of anybody around. Couldn't do this without them. BSN Sports, Mr. Jim Garris, Weber Bookkeeping, Maui Valley Title Agency, Clubhouse Pizza and Nay, Fairchild Family Chiropractic Center, Osmo Performance and Fitness, Drop Zone Pizzeria and Striker and Ayersville. Yum, you can't go wrong with Drop Zone Pizzeria. Higby Embroidery, Signs Excavating, Firestone Tavern. What better way to celebrate than going out to Firestone Tavern for some post-game burgers and pizza and onion rings. Mm -mm -mm. Or go to Oklahoma Tavern. Get some ice cold beverages and the best wings ever at Oklahoma Tavern. Northwest Ohio Sports Batten Stevens Body Shop Tenor Athletic Boosters. Make sure you get your booster tickets. Grand prize is three thousand dollars. Second prize two thousand. Third prize is one thousand. And your fourth prize is five hundred bucks. Tickets are six for fifty or ten dollars each. Cut and polished hair and nail salon. Thanks to Jenny for sponsoring the broadcast booth tonight. Wooden Indian Pawn Shop, Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services, and Wiener Hill and Weber Attorneys at Law. Hope everybody has a fantastic Easter weekend, and we'll see everybody back. Tuesday, we'll be over at Wayne Trace. We'll bring you the Rams versus the Raiders. So until then, have a fantastic weekend, everybody. Good night. Thanks for listening to this exclusive presentation of Tenora Rams Sports. Be sure to tune in next time when we bring you more Rams action and follow us online at TenoraRamsSportsAudio.com or on Twitter at Tenora Rams Audio. 